O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome as we gather here in church and as you join us on the live stream. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Hilary Waters. It's a privilege to be able to support Father Roy uh, by praying for, for Hilary and indeed for himself. Privilege given all that he's done for us uh, in the parish, particularly the extraordinary uh, uh, work over these last few months. And to celebrate it in a way which is so important to him, the celebration of this Mass, uh, the celebration of the Eucharist. And we're reminded again uh, in the readings, it's a gospel which is repeating itself, a theme which runs through this August about the Eucharist and about the bread of life. The readings remind us not simply what happened when the people were fed, it reminds us to, to realise the great privilege that we today are that people being fed by the Lord in the Word and in the Eucharist. And as we begin, we acknowledge our unworthiness and our need of his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have you seat at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. So let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The sons of Israel began to wail. Who will give us meat to eat? They said. Think of the fish we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. Here we are wasting away, stripped of everything. There is nothing but manna for us to look at. The manna was like coriander seed and had the appearance of bedellium. The people went round gathering it and ground it in a mill or crushed it with a pestle. It was then cooked in a pot and made into pancakes. It tasted like cake made with oil. When the dew fell on the camp of, at night time, the manna fell with it. Moses heard the people wailing, every family at the door of its tent. The anger of the Lord flared out and Moses greatly worried over this. And he spoke to the Lord. Why do you treat your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor with you, so that you load me on me the weight of all this nation? Was it I who conceived all these people? Was it I who gave them birth? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom, like a nurse with a baby at the breast, to the land that I swore to give their fathers. Where am I to find me to give to all these people? when they come worrying me so tearfully and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry this nation by myself alone. The weight is too much for me. If this is how you want to deal with me, I would rather you killed me, if only I had found favor in your eyes and not lived to see such misery, misery as this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bring out your joy to God our strength. 
bring bring our our joy to God our strength. My people did not heed my voice, and Israel would not obey. So I left them in their stubbornness of heart to follow their own designs. Bring out your joy joy to to God God our strength. Oh, that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. At once I would subdue their foes, turn my hand against their enemies. Bring out your your joy joy to to God God our our strength. strength. The Lord's enemies would cringe at their feet, and their subjection would last forever. But Israel I would feed with finest wheat, and fill them with honey from the rock. Bring out your joy joy to to God our strength. Please stand for the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. This gospel worthily and well, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be them by themselves. But the people heard of this, and leaving the towns, went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd. He took pity on them and healed the sick. When the evening came, the disciples went to him and said, this is a lonely place, and the time has slipped by. So send the people away, so that they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven, and said the blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to his disciples who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, 12 baskets full. Those who ate numbered about 5,000 men, to say nothing of the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When you get home after Mass today, please read the whole of the Book of Numbers, chapter 11, because today's reading does not tell the whole story. What you've heard here today is neither the complete problem nor the complete answer. Not only are the Hebrews urged on by rabble-rousers complaining, but God is getting fed up with them. In fact, he's so fed up that in the first part of this chapter, he has already set one part of their camp on fire and Moses is at the end of his tether. Let's take the Hebrews first. They are fed up with manna. Now, in yesterday's reading on Sunday, you heard that manna looked nice and white like hoarfrost, but that has changed. It now looks like bdellium. Anyone come across bdellium? Almost certainly not. It's a resin which looks like a time-expired toffee apple left out in the sun for a week. Pretty unattractive. And then they're wailing that their life was so much better in Egypt. Well, it wasn't. Life is rarely better, is very rarely better in the good old times. In the year I was born, there were no supermarkets, no motorways, no sliced bread, no frozen food, no microwaves, no dishwashers, no CDs, no computers, no mobiles, no trainers, no television. We're lucky. Most of those deficiencies apply to vast swathes of the world's population today. Second, for the Hebrews, it was all somebody else's fault. Just like today, they ought to be doing something. In our day, they is either the government the members of parliament, the civil service, the church, the social services, 
the NHS, in fact anyone but ourselves. And that's what the Hebrews expected of Moses. Third, Moses himself. Over two years, he has been the intermediary between God and the Hebrews, and is getting blamed the whole time but from both sides. So, we have three problems. One, the people are complaining. Two, the religious leader is the only conduit to God. Three, God is fed up with hearing complaints from those he's actually saved from slavery. So, how does this get solved? Moses needed to delegate. You will remember that much earlier his father-in-law told him to stop doing all the legal work himself and appoint judges. And here God takes a hand. He says to Moses, in a bit which has not been read out today, select 70 elders and I will give them some of your spirit. God said, they will share with you the burden of this nation and you will no longer have to carry it by yourself. Well, we don't have to wait for God to nominate helpers. We can all relieve the burdens of other people by volunteering. Priests, teachers and social workers to pick out just three categories. Like Moses, they all carry the cares of others. Well, as we come out of the COVID-19 restrictions, let us consider how we, like the 70 elders, could relieve them of some of their burdens. Second, when we get out of these restrictions, we must not expect life to return to what we thought it was like before COVID-19. Let us not maximise our expectations. We've got used to doing a lot, of, a lot of things ourselves during the lockdown. But just to take one example, we still need to come to Mass in person, but we don't need to expect priests to do things which do not actually need priests, where we could be helping to do some of those ourselves. And third, let us not be quick to complain that God is looking the other way or is not doing things for us. Perhaps God might have some complaints about us. So let us look first at ourselves to see if perhaps we could improve our own relations with God. So, read the book of Numbers, chapter 11. It has lessons for all of us here, today, and as we go forward out of this pandemic. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May the joy of the pain for our good and the good of all this holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our saviour and redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as you endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Edward, St. Pius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command of form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. I thank Deacon Michael for his homily this morning. Uh, uh, do please take his advice uh, and reread Numbers. As much as anything, it, uh, it's a memory jog uh, to that phrase that we hear, heard this morning in the Eucharistic prayer about the Holy Spirit coming down like the dew fall. It's that whole uh, beginning of that understanding of that language to be found there in Numbers. Thank you to Mike, who is on the live stream, I think this week, certainly this morning. Thank you for the choice of the appropriate music before Mike too. Thank you to the stewards uh, for making it possible for us to be here um, and uh, for their cleaning afterwards. The, the regular cleaner is away for the week, so, so thank you for that. And for closing the door um, halfway through. For those who could hear on the microphones, it was coming a little noisy uh, downstairs. It is the summer youth camp taking place. Uh, they're not actually camping, it's just during the day. Um, sadly, it doesn't appear to be summer either, but they are youth. And it's great that we have that sense of the life of the parish uh, returning uh, day by day. Uh, so they're spending the next few days um, uh, enjoying uh, each other's company, uh, enjoying uh, being here. Reminder, evening prayer, 6 p.m. If you have any intentions, do please send them office at cpg.church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.